Hello and welcome. My name is Christina from Empowered Creator. I am a mindset and conscious manifesting teacher and coach, and this is my YouTube channel. Here, I talk about all things law of assumption, mindset, conscious manifesting, the quantum universe, and a lot more. And my goal is to simplify everything without the fluff. So if you guys like this content and you would like to see more of it, I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel, comment on this video, like it, share it, and just stick around. Also, if you need any help with your specific situation, I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching, email coaching, small group coaching, as well as custom subliminals for whatever needs you may have. So if you're interested in any of these services, the links are below in the description box. Click on them and they're going to take you to my website. With all that being said, let's dive into today's video. In today's video, I wanted to reference a very famous lecture by Neville Goddard. The title of the lecture is The Pearl of Great Price. And in that lecture, and I'm going to explain what that talks about in a minute, uh, basically Neville makes the point that as conscious manifestors, we need to be self-reliant. We need to trust ourselves, rely on ourselves, be independent thinkers, and not actually give our power away. So all these are very important messages. I would like to touch on these in today's video, so stay tuned. So as I just said, today's video is inspired by Neville Goddard's lecture, The Pearl of Great Price. Of course, this is a phrase that is originally borrowed from the Bible. It originally appears in the Bible. However, Neville, as we all know, interpreted the Bible in his own way, in his own spiritual way, um, from the point of view of the law of assumption, from the point of view of how the universe works. And so he used that term, the Pearl of Great Price, to actually give people the very, very important, very significant, very crucial message that they need to be self-reliant. By the way, if you're not familiar with this lecture, I would highly, highly recommend that you go on YouTube and find it and listen to it, or if you prefer to actually read the transcript, you can Google it, The Pearl of Great Price, and you will be able to find uh, the written transcript of the lecture. I very, very highly recommend reading or listening to the lecture. It is a very, very important message, and it is a very, very significant teaching. So what Neville was talking about in this lecture was how, as conscious manifestors, as people who are actually know that we have the power to shape our own lives, our own realities, our own destinies, if you will, we need to always come back to ourselves and to always trust ourselves, our inner power to create, to decide for ourselves, to find any answers we're seeking within ourselves, because everything is within, all the answers we're seeking are within ourselves, and to actually be very careful to not give away our power to any outside sources or forces. And that actually is a very broad encompassing term, and it can include absolutely everything that we might perceive as a restricting factor, or a factor or a source or a force that is actually making decisions for us. And I'm going to elaborate on that. For example, we are conditioned to believe in all sorts of experts or all sorts of statistics, all sorts of facts of the 3D reality. Oh, that politician said that. Oh, that doctor said that. The stats are showing that, so this is how it must be and it cannot be any other way. That person said this or that person said that, so that means what I want is not possible to me. See, we do this all the time. We take the opinions of people, we take the words of people, we take what people say, what, we take what people believe, we take something that we read on the internet or something that we heard on YouTube or on social media or whatever, and we take it as facts, and we tend to form a story around it to justify to ourselves why our desire is not possible. Why our desire is very difficult? Why our desire is unattainable? Because reality said this, or that person said that, or that newscaster said that, or that talk show person said this, or I heard that um, somewhere, I read that somewhere, um, it was on Instagram, it was on YouTube, someone said it, I read it, I heard it, blah, 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 this means I can't. Essentially, we're so used to treating other people as experts, as the know-it-alls, um, we are used to treating others' opinions as gospel. And we use these opinions, we use what we read, what we, we hear, what someone said, to actually mean that we have a restriction or multiple restrictions on what it is that we want. So this is exactly what Neville warned against in that lecture. He reminded people that all the power is within us 
And we should always remember to actually go within, to make our own decisions, to decide what is meant for us, to choose our reality, to choose our own opinions, to find our answers to any questions that we have. And in general, he warned people not to put their power outside of themselves. Whatever that external force or external source might be, whether it's the media, social media, a friend, a family member, or some organization, some bigger structure, an institution, whatever, whatever, whatever it might be. Always remember that there is an infinite number of realities, so you always need to remember not to give your power away to outside sources, to external sources. Because ultimately, the power is always within you. The power about what to believe, what to resonate with, what to choose, what to think, what to assume, what to feel, all rests within you. And if you have any questions, the answers are still within you. They are within your higher self. So that applies to pretty much everything. Neville specifically um, mentioned in his lecture uh, about astrologers or numerology and things like that. For those of you who don't know, Neville actually used to be, when he was younger in life, um, he used to be very much into astrology and I believe he was even doing readings for people. But then as he came to learn the law and as he came to study it and apply it, he realized that all of that was actually useless. Astrology could not tell him his future. Astrology could not predict his fortune. Numerology could not predict his fate in life. Saying nowadays, I know a lot of you might be into tarot card readings. I have nothing against them. Let me say that. Let me clear that up. I have nothing against them. A lot of the tarot card readers are very nice, very enlightened people, very sweet people. A lot of them even believe in manifesting. The issue I have with tarot card readings is that they only pick on that one specific reality that is shown in the cards in that moment. So they tell you, okay, this is what your person is feeling. This is what your person is going to do. This is the action they're going to take. This is this, this is that. And it's just one reality of the infinite number of realities. So yes, some people will say, yes, tarot card readings actually read your current energy. That can be true because at the end of the day, everything and everyone is as pushed out. So that can be true. However, also remember that you as a conscious manifestor have access at all times and can tap into at any time any of the infinite realities that there are. So you don't need the tarot card reading to tell you what your current energy is, um, what your person is going to do over the next month, or what their intentions are, what their feelings are. You are able to choose what their feelings are. Whatever you assume their feelings are, this is what their feelings are for you. What you think they're thinking about you is essentially what they're thinking about you. They're always your mirror. And that's not just for specific people. It's also um, for money, for career, whatever else you might be inclined and tempted to actually use either tarot card readings or astrology or numerology or any of those uh, predictive arts and sciences, however you want to call them. Remember that they're still your mirror and remember that they can always only show one version of reality. And a lot of them actually like to interpret the 3D, which is something that I feel is a little bit of a gray area. Because as conscious manifestors, we're not really supposed to be sticking to the 3D and dwelling into the 3D, especially if there are circumstances in the 3D that we're changing. We really don't want to be sticking to the 3D and analyzing it. So nothing against tarot card readings. If you want to follow them, follow them by all means. Just know that they're actually restricting you and if you're using them to make any decisions or to get answers and all that, stop doing that. Treat them as something fun. Treat them perhaps as um, your energy being reflected back to you, your current energy, but nothing more than that. It's just one reality that they're picking up on based on whatever cards fell on the table. But you, at any moment, can go back within and actually choose your reality. You have access to an infinite number of realities. So why restrict yourself to just that one reality that the tarot cards gave you in that day? So this is the whole Neville's point in that lecture, The Pearl of Great Price, that you always need to come back to yourself and you always need to be careful not to give your power away to outside sources. You yourself have the power to think for yourself, decide for yourself, 
By the way, let me say here, um, I hear a lot of people say the universe will decide what's meant for you. The universe will bring you this, that. Uh, maybe it wasn't the right time and the universe knows the right time and all that. Guys, the universe is neutral. The universe always follows where your consciousness is. The universe will always reflect where your consciousness is dominantly at. Okay, so it's not a matter of timing from the universe, the universe deciding, the universe telling you what's meant for you and what's not. These are all limiting beliefs. It's where your consciousness is at, that's what you see reflected from the universe, from other people, from the outside world in general. So again, this takes us back to buying the pearl of great price. And buying the pearl of great price means reading yourself from all belief in outside sources, reading yourself from giving your power away to outside sources to decide for you, to tell you your future, to tell you what's meant for you and what's not, to give you answers, to tell you what you think, what to believe, how to interpret the 3D reality and all these things. This is what buying the Pearl of Great Price means. It means going back to relying on yourself, going back to self-reliance, going back to being an independent thinker stepping back into your power and realizing that everything you need, everything you want, including all the answers about the present, the future, whatever it is that you're seeking is within you, within you and nowhere else. Even when you're deciding to give your power away to outside sources and believe what they say and form your opinions based on what they say, that's still you. That is still you making that decision to believe there. Okay, so please understand that. Please realize that. I want that to be very, very clear. And the last point I wanted to make, us YouTube coaches, remember that we're always teaching from our own experience. We're always teaching from what resonates for us. We're always teaching from what, how we interpret the teachings, um, what we've seen in our reality, how we're manifesting. It doesn't mean we're God. It doesn't mean we're infallible. It doesn't mean that everything, absolutely everything we say will resonate with you. So again, even with us coaches, be an independent thinker. Think for yourself. Always go back within. Take what resonates. Take inspiration. Take guidance. That's great. But at the end of the day, you always want, want to go back to yourself. Think for yourself. Decide for yourself. Throw away the limiting beliefs. Because even coaches can have limiting beliefs. Surprise. We're still human, you know. I'm trying not to have very many limiting beliefs, but I'm sure I have some. But anyway, you need to go back to yourself. You need to go back within, always, and decide what resonates for you. Decide what's meant for you. Decide what your reality is. Make your choice and dwell in that. Ultimately, you have the ultimate power. Not me, not the other coach, not the politician, not the institution, um, not this or that expert. You. It's you. So please learn and remember to be self-reliant, to be an independent thinker, and make sure as a conscious manifester that you buy the pearl of great price. Believe in yourself. Believe in your inner power. Trust in yourself more than anything or anyone else. With all that being said, I'm going to wrap up this video here. I intend that this has helped. As always, I very much appreciate you guys being on this channel, watching this content. I love making this content for you. And as always, I look forward to seeing you all at the next video. Until then, take care and bye-bye.